share some information with you. And then uh, you will have the opportunity to ask your questions. So as we're going through the presentation today, if you have any questions, we uh, encourage you to put them into the chat box. So in Zoom, there's a chat function. Hopefully all of you are familiar with it. Go ahead and put your questions into the chat and please put them in to go to everyone. If you have a question, there's a very good chance that others do as well. And so please make your questions public so we can all see them and we'll make sure that we answer all of the questions in our session today, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is uh, Jen Singer and I come from the International Student Office at UWM, the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. You've probably interacted with me, although you might not know it. Um, it's my team is the ones that are receiving your applications and your transcripts and your test scores um, and facilitating the process of your application and then also issuing that I-20 and making sure that you've successfully transitioned to UWM when you get here. Okay, so I'm going to start with some really basic information for our new international students. I'm hoping that all of you have already seen the information that I'm going to share, uh, but I want to go over it just very, very quickly. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Dr. Boylan, can you confirm? Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Sorry, I just had to unmute nope. myself. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so this is the website that UWM has for its newly admitted international students. Most of you have probably already seen this page. You can see in the top left, it's called IS Connect. IS is the International Student and Scholar Services Unit. That's the International Student Office. This is the page that you're going to use while you're a student at UWM. This is where you're going to go to uh, help with uh, maintain your visa status and all the rules and benefits that come along with that. In the top right, you can see you can log in. This is where you log in to uh, submit your request to get your I-20. So hopefully many of you have already done that. And you'll find all sorts of great information on this page that you'll learn as you're a student. This very top bar though, the newly admitted student page is what I have highlighted here. And this is most relevant for you now. You can see that there is information here, kind of a short list of things that you should be pre preparing for right away. And if you scroll down, you'll find these three black bars. If you click on them, they expand. So for example, for all of you right now, after your admission, if you click on that, it will expand and give you information about more things. So a couple of things that are critical for you from the beginning uh, is first, the very first thing you need to do is create your ePanther ID and set up your email. Your ePanther ID is the part that comes before the email. So for example, right, I'm Jen Singer. My email address is jksinger at uwm.edu. So my ePanther ID is jksinger. That ePanther ID is important because it helps you log into all of UWM systems, including this page where you log in to request your I-20. So it's important that you set it up right away. If you click on this tab, it will take you to this page where you'll get all of the details about how to do that, how to set up your UWM email account, and also how to enroll and participate in the Microsoft, Microsoft Multi-Factor Authentication. We call it MFA. I'm sure all of you are familiar with this. It's a system where when you log into something in order to confirm your identity, they have you uh, acknowledge it in a different way. Most people at UWM have an app on their smartphone um, you can set it up in different ways. If you follow the instructions here, it will help you. I do want to highlight, though, that if you set this up and you have the MFA app on your smartphone, it's really important that you bring that phone with you when you travel to the U.S. or you change your MFA before you come. Unfortunately, we've had a lot of students that have traveled to the U.S., realized they left that phone at home, and so they arrive here and are unable to log in. Of course, we will help you work with the campus to get that fixed, but it can make for a very challenging couple of days when you arrive and you can't log into anything. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go into details about all of these things, but you can find the information here. Um, when you are getting ready to come, when you have your visa, there's a whole list of things here for you to do to plan for your arrival. Um, you should be connecting with your advisor to figure out how to register for classes, etc. You'll have some orientations and departmental requirements that you're gonna need to uh, pay attention to. At the bottom here, we do have 
a spring arrival calendar. Um, if you click on that, it will give you a calendar with some important dates highlighted so that as you're planning your travel, uh, you can understand what dates you want to plan around. And also in the section, the only other thing I want to highlight is the vaccination requirements. UWM does not require any vaccinations um, to study at UWM. The only exception is students that will be living in our on-campus dormitories have some vaccination requirements, and you'll find that in the contract that you sign to live on campus. Um, however, the United States does have um, a requirement that you be vaccinated for COVID-19 before you travel to the US. So if you have not been vaccinated yet, I would strongly encourage you to look at this information right away because it does take some time to get uh, vaccinated. Depending on the shots that you take, it typically takes at least two shots that have to be timed apart. And there is an additional two weeks after the last shot before you're considered fully vaccinated. So if you're not already vaccinated, you're gonna do that, need to do that right away, okay? Um, also, once you arrive, there's a whole list of things here that are the things that our international students most often ask about. The very first thing is the arrival check-in. That's the most important. So part of your F-1 visa status requires that you check in with us within three business days of your arrival in the US. Um, this arrival process is done online. You don't need to physically come to our office for it, but you do need documents that you get as you enter the US. So you're not able to do this before you arrive, but once you arrive in the US and you arrive in Milwaukee, you can go click on here. It'll give you instructions. You're gonna log into the site um, and answer some questions and upload some documents. You can take pictures of the documents on your phone. So don't worry about having access to a printer or anything. And you'll follow the instructions. After you arrive and do this check-in process, then you'll get access to orientations and other things that you need once you get here. You'll see on this page, there's all sorts of information about getting a US bank account, where to go shopping, where to buy food that comes from um, the place that you're from, right? Food that you're familiar with eating, how to get a cell phone, how to apply for a social security number. You can find all of that information here, okay? Um, just a couple other small things to highlight is down here at the bottom, what happens if you can't make it by the start date? So January 23rd is the first day of classes in our spring semester. You need to be here on campus, ready to start classes on the 23rd. If you can't do that, we are not gonna be able to allow you to arrive late for any reason. So if you can't make it, you'll have two choices. The first is that you can decide to take some classes online from home. Um, in order to do that, first of all, keep in mind that you'll be doing the entire spring semester from home. You can't start online and then come mid-semester. So if you start online from home, it's for the entire semester. Um, and also you'll need to work with your advisor to identify courses that can be done online. Not all courses are available in that capacity. So you'll have to work with your advisor to figure that out. Um, or the other option, if you can't make it by January 23rd, is you can request to defer your admission. All you need to do is come to this page, click on this link. It will take you to an online form where you can provide your information to us. And then we will receive that and process the deferral. Okay, it's quite simple, but you do need to notify us that you need to defer. If you already have an I-20, we will then work with you to issue a new I-20 with start dates for the following fall. Okay, also on this page, you'll find recordings of previous sessions that we offer for all of our newly admitted students. Uh, so if you have questions about um, something and you think that watching one of these previous sessions would be helpful, feel free to come here and, and watch the video. Or you can reach out to us, of course, at any time. You're welcome to send an email to isss at uwm.edu. You're welcome to call. Keep in mind that we only are answering the phones during business hours. Um, we do take chat messages. Um, so as a UWM student, part of our Microsoft package includes Teams. And so if you download Teams to your phone or your computer and you log in using that ePanther ID and password, and then you click on this uh, link here on this website to say chat now, it will actually initiate a chat directly with you with the international admissions team through, through the Teams platform or you can make an appointment to meet with someone virtually. If you follow this link, it will take you to an online calendar that shows available dates and times, and you can select one, and then we will meet with you um, over Teams so that we can have a virtual appointment, okay? 
Now, I know that there's a lot of questions about your arrival to UWM. Um, I'm not going to go into all of the details now. A reminder that if you have questions, you're welcome to put them into the chat, and we will make sure that we answer all of the questions during the session today, okay? I just, I know we've had a few people arrive late, so I just want to say a couple of quick reminders. The first is uh, thank you to everyone for keeping your microphones muted and your cameras off. It really makes for a nicer experience for everyone. Um, also, if you have questions, please put them into the chat and we'll make sure we answer them. And then also, if you could take a look at the name that is on the screen and verify that it is the complete name, meaning first and last name of the name that you use to, to apply to UWM. Uh, we track who attended these sessions and as a reward for attending the session, when you arrive at UWM, we will give you a UWM branded engineering pen. It's a pen that you used to write with. It has several really cool engineering tools attached to it, but we can't do that if we don't know that you attended. So please take a look at the name on your Zoom account. And if it's not the same as what's on your UWM account, please change it so that we can track who's here. Okay, with that, I'm gonna pass this over to um, Dr. John Boyland, who is a faculty member in computer science. Dr. Boyland is gonna to talk to you about the computer science master's program itself. Dr. Boyland, take it away. Great, okay. Um, welcome everyone. It's really nice that we have so many people who are interested and are uh, ready to come to UW-Milwaukee. I'm gonna talk a little bit about our master's program. I'm going to, we have two tracks. There's the professional track, and then there's the regular or research track. The professional track allows you to take three courses of the 10 courses plus a little fraction of a course um, from other departments. So you could take something from health and informatics. You could take something from business. And this allows you to build up sort of a balanced um, curriculum. Uh, the other, the, another thing about the professional track is that we're moving towards a competency based and we want to make sure everyone has um, some basic programming skills at the level of data structures and algorithms. And so starting in spring 2023, all new students are going to take a sufficiency test to place them to see whether they need to take a data structures and algorithms course here at UWM. Now, UWM, our data structures and algorithms course is much more programming based and less theoretical than in some other universities you may have been familiar with. And so if you come out of our course, uh, you will have a lot of programming skills that are actually useful when you go into an employment. And so we want our students to be successful in getting employment. Um, a lot of our students will get uh, internships while they're in the program. Others will. Uh, apply for um, OPT and do internships after they've graduated from the program, and we want them to be successful in that. The, um, if people already know how to program, they can pass a test that we are giving on Thursday, January 19th at nine o'clock in the morning from nine to 10, and that is on a day when there's a lot of um, uh, orientation things going on on campus, so it's a good time to be there. If you miss that, then we, you can just take the Data Structures Algorithms course, um, which was offered every semester in both um, in-person and online uh, modes. Uh, the other track is the regular track. Students in the regular track are uh, eligible to have TA ships or RA ships in the department. There are not a whole lot of RA ships, very few, and they're not a, a massive number of teaching assistantships, but there is some possibility. These are the only assistantships that come with fee waivers, and they're only for people on the regular track. But the regular track has more course requirements. You don't take more courses, but the courses have to be higher level, and the uh, we don't routinely allow people to take them from other departments. Uh, and starting in the spring, students in this track have a breadth requirement to make, they need to take three courses from a list of about 10 courses the department offers of, of um, different areas, research areas in the department. So that's sort of the overview of those, um, those uh, two tracks. In either case, you need to demonstrate that you've had a, a reasonable background 
in computer science. And if not, you can take extra courses, most of which can count towards your degree at, uh, when you are here at UWM. And this will be, you fill this out with your advisor. It's called the Undergraduate Requirements Assessment. And um, that includes this data structures algorithms course I said. And we have also ways of placing out of these courses if you haven't already taken them. So um, I think that's the, the main thing I was wanting to cover today. Um, let's see, any questions yet? No, no questions from students. So please feel free to drop any questions in the chat. Now, when you come here, other, I talked about these breadth requirements and, and other courses you need to take. Otherwise, this is a very open program, which is both um, uh, can be sort of a, uh, a difference from what you may have expected. Many course students show up and say, well, what are the courses I'm assigned to? And actually, you're not assigned to courses. We may tell you you need to take one course, but you still need to sign up for all your courses. And you get to choose. Of course, you should choose a course, a mandatory course we give it. But otherwise, you get to choose a lot of different courses from available courses on the list. So we'll need to search for courses that are available. Can you take more than four three courses for a semester to finish the entire course in 18 months? Now, um, we often recommend that you take for your first semester, if you're full time, you can take three courses plus a one credit required course in introduction to graduate study in computer science. So that would be 10 credits. And then the next semester, if you're doing well, you can take four courses. If, things, if it works well for your first semester and you think you can handle four courses, then you can do that. And then in your last semester, take three courses. And that way you can get the whole thing done in uh, three semesters. On the other hand, if you do an internship, that may take up some of your time during the semester, though then you get some money, which makes it worthwhile. And then you might take uh, go on for a fourth semester. So I think Pranay, who is here, will be able to talk a little bit about the options he looked at. So yes, it is quite possible to do this in three semesters. Is it possible to transfer to the regular track from the professional track? After your first semester here, if you took um, uh, at least three courses that are considered high level, including the data structures algorithms course and two other so-called 700 level courses, these are graduate only courses, and you get um, uh, only A's and B's, and you get more A's than B's, or at least as many A's as B's, then you can transfer to the regular track. But you need one semester at the professional level first. Can regular track students take courses from other departments? That is less likely. You would need to have a case made by your thesis advisor or why this is particularly necessary to do. So for example, we have had in the past someone who was running a user interface study for the thesis, and they needed to take a psychology course on how to run um, uh, experiments, user interface experiments. So the option is there, but it needs to be um, it needs to be justified by you and your advisor. How to register for the courses? Um, you use the system called Pause where the, the courses, I don't think registration is open yet for the spring, but in pause, you can uh, look for the courses that you're interested in at the graduate level and sign up for them there. The courses, you can search for them on the catalog already. The, the schedule is set, but I don't think it's open for registration yet. So really good questions people are having. They're very practical and useful. The, one of the things that's important to do is it's important to talk to your professors. So often, if you like have a question about something, make sure to talk to them. Our professors are used to talking, especially to graduate students. And so if you're a graduate student here, you're, um, you should be quite willing to talk to any of the professors. If you're doing the course online, then you can uh, talk to them through Teams or chat or even show up in person. At my, uh, I teach a combined online and in-person course, and the online students are actually um, uh, encouraged, if they want, to attend class since there is space in seating in there. So it's very important to be advocating for yourself and making sure to ask questions if you're not certain about things. 
what is the internship cycle for spring semester students? You're quite right. So um, Pranay is going to talk about some of this in a bit. If you start in the spring, you're not eligible to work out off campus in the summer. You'd have to wait till the next summer. On the other hand, you can work on campus in the summer. You can work, at, uh, I believe, full time in the summer at an on campus job. Now, on campus jobs don't pay as well as internships, but they are a possibility. And you won't be paying any fees in the summer because you don't need to be signed up for any classes. So it allows you to have um, living expenses paid and also enjoy Milwaukee, which has an absolutely delightful summer uh, season. Dr. Boylan, would, uh, would yeah. you like me to address the um, internship employment? Yeah, once you situation you talk about yeah. a little bit more detail. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so when you come to the US on a student visa, you're coming in on the F1 visa. And the F1 visa status has some pretty strict employment requirements. Um, one of them is that you are not eligible to work off campus without special permission. The special permission that you'll get is called CPT or curricular practical training. And to be eligible for CPT, you have to be in valid F1 status for at least one academic year, uh, which means a spring and a fall semester. Uh, so if you're starting in spring, the first time that you're going to be eligible for CPT is after the fall semester ends in December. So you'll be on campus over the summer and you're not going to be eligible uh, to get the permission that you need to work off campus. As Dr. Boylan said, you can work on campus. There might be some really good opportunities for you there, uh, but you're not going to be eligible for that off campus internship. I also just want to make sure you know, and you'll learn a lot more about this when you arrive on campus in your international student orientation, that you must have this permission before you start working. Okay, it's absolutely critical um, to maintain your legal status in the US that you seek this permission and get it before you start working. Uh, but we'll, we'll tell you all about that when you arrive on campus. But yeah, keep in mind, you're, you're as an F1 student, you're eligible to work on campus up to 20 hours a week while school is in session. And then over the summer, you're eligible to work full time on campus only. All right, Dr. Boylan, it looks like we've got some more questions about courses. Yeah, I I, I answered in chat to some level. So it, UWM has uh, courses that are listed as graduate only. Those are 700 level or higher. And then also has called UG courses, which have a mixture of undergraduate and graduate courses. And those will have it, the 400, 500, or 600 level will have a G version, which are the ones that the graduate students take. And the course requirements will be slightly different for graduate students than for undergraduates. They may need to write uh, an extra paper or something of that nature. So um, yes, any of the ones that has a G on it is available for graduate students. In the, uh, if you look at the schedule of courses page, let me just see if I can get that and post it. It will have, you can say, I'm only interested in looking at graduate level courses, and that will be, um, that will allow you to only look at courses which are allowed to be signed up for and which are likely to be acceptable for your, your degree. There are a few G courses of different departments that are not definitely not allowed for the major. So you need to make sure to check ahead of time that these are uh, allowed. But there's the link for the, the looking for courses and it has in there any level and you can change that to be graduate level. And of course, you would choose spring semester 2023. Um, uh, maybe at this time, it'd be uh, nice um, to move on to Pranay, who is a current student in our master's program. And I'm going to, I'll be moderating the chat and answering any questions I see there. And I may come back if that seems like that would be useful. So Pranay, you're ready to come on in? Great. Yes. Thank you, Professor Boylan, for giving me this opportunity. And hi, all. Thank you for joining this session. And I'm Pranay Mandarpu, and I came from India. Currently, I'm doing my computers, master's in computer science, and I'm a regular track student. So it's really an exciting time, and I can relate to your batch because I actually came spring this year. So I can I know all the tensions that are going on is like whether spring is a good time to come in, whether because Milwaukee has so much of cold, can I survive there? I know this all question pops up and uh, we have so many options to explore. But trust me, 
uh, when you dublin came to my option it was a very easy decision to make because uh, it has such a wonderful platform and professors and so much interactability with them so all those things led me to making a decision yeah i am ready for spring because before that i was just arguing with my parents like uh, hey can i go for fall because fall has a good opportunities rather than spring but uh, after considering uwm i was like uh, okay fine i can i'm ready for spring so you might have heard like uh, the spring have like less advantage in scoring internships and all those things but trust me we have actually more advantage than fall students because when you come for spring semester you have entire one semester to actually see your fall members who are securing for internships so you can you know how they are struggling or you know how what ways they have uh, chosen to apply for internships so you have your whole spring semesters and you have whole your summer to actually prepare for getting an internship or a full time or actually work or your profile so after that when actually fall comes means when you come to your second semester you can start applying for companies right away and you don't have you don't need to prepare for anything because you are preparing for that entire moment for past 8 months or something but when fall students came come to the college in that semester they need some adjust time like for 3 months or 4 months so after that they started applying around december or january so we get a head, head start of around 8 months so this 8 months helps us to build connections with our seniors and like uh, uh, other members who are working in the company to get referrals and all so we have kind of distinct uh, edge over the others and apart from that uh, you have another advantage also when you come to spring it's in between uh semester so you have so many opportunities to actually apply for organizations so such as uh, uh i am leading google developer student club here in college so it is supported by google so the openings for to become a lead for google developer student clubs comes around at april to june window and if you are master student uh, they require you to have one year left in your college curriculum then only they can assign you for as a lead so all these things come being our advantage and apart from that uh, uh, i'm a teaching assistant here at uwm and uh, it's actually a great opportunity because uh, my fees is waived off and uh, i have to pay just mandatory fees international student fees and apart from um, and for you also you have an ad- another advantage so when you come for spring and if you if department recognize you as a potential uh, student who can be handle classes and all they will give you a greater position in spring itself not at ea because in spring semester it's hard to assign given new assignments for ea but they will allow you to do grading positions and all and after that when you go for fall uh, fall is a new semester so you have an opportunity to, to get a ta ship in second semester itself it's a opportun it's maybe chances but there is a opportunity but for fall students when they come in when they get grade position they have to wait for two semesters because in spring it's really hard to get a new assign new assignments for ta so you have to wait for two semesters in third semester you will get a opportunity to become a ta when you come in fall but when you come in spring uh, you will get an opportunity to become a ta in second semester itself so it means that if you do good job in ta and continue for three semesters you don't have to pay for fees for three semesters so that's the ta opportunities we have and apart from that we have ra opportunity and those are also same as well but uh, it's really good that we have all these opportunities to apply and apart from that we have on campus jobs also and uwm is considered as like uh, it's mostly run by students so everywhere you go students are handling everything so for example front desk and all all uh, driving we have another service known as beyond safe side so after 6 o'clock to evening night 2 o'clock uh, campus provides you like a free cab ride so that you can travel safe anywhere in the boundaries campus defined so bus drivers are also students and in i'm i'm working in a financial department at this dean's office so it's uh, it's a uh, you have to do audits and all in the department so i am working there so we have so many on campus jobs so that when you come here uh, it won't cover your tuition fees but it will help you to cover your 
expenses like rent or food or those kind of things so we have those opportunities and another thing as international students you are not supposed to work outside so it's against our it will go against the, our visa rules so make sure that when you come here you secure a job here on campus not to go anywhere out and we have like 20 hours to work on and you might say as a spring student we are losing whole summer and we cannot work and we are just wasting our time but the thing is when you are working here on some when you are in when you come in spring the summer will actually help you to build your profile so if you don't have if you come directly from bachelor's to masters when you apply for any kind of internship they actually look for experience so if you don't have any experience the summer will actually help you give you some time so that you can uh, learn any kind of certifications or any kind of skills that you can actually put it in your resume and highlight it so for me i personally did aws certification um, i'm thinking to write next semester or something but the summer helped me to uh, prepare for those kind of things so, and i prepared uh, build a new projects and uh, uh, interacted with companies and of course enjoyed milwaukee summer as well but um, all this uh, all this advantages and benefits uh, i can think of when you join in spring and yeah the burning question i i always get in linkedin is like hey prane how did you survive the winter of milwaukee trust me uh, when i was in india i have seen worse than here because in, in india it was not uh, because i was i came from delhi so it's like super cold so it i mean india infrastructure is not built for like uh, to sustain winters and all but trust me here in milwaukee or any cold area in us it's actually built to sustain winters so it's like you have to worry during the transit but apart from that when you go inside buildings or when you go inside classes and all it's fully heated and all so you don't have to worry about it and snow and all it's actually fun so if you have proper clothing and all i would say you don't have to worry about anything so i did my winter shopping back in india in delhi because they have few good stocks or something so if you if you are from india i would say just have a trip to delhi or mumbai and get some winter clothing or if you're thinking like okay fine i'll buy my winter clothing here in milwaukee i would suggest just bring few winter clothes from india so that you can survive here until you shop so we have a great recommendation of places like burlington and those kind of places too you can go and buy cheap winter clothes but uh, it's actually effective so apart from that uh, yeah so i have a very great journey here and the projects here in milwaukee so here here in uwm so i have been doing like so many projects with the department and it's been really fun and professors are really supportive i just you have to show them the interest that you are actually putting your extra efforts and all professor will join you in that effort and help you to get this out so if you have any kind of doubts such as for example i'm currently building a project which requires android development using kotlin so in the student environment i know for sure if i stuck there stuck anywhere i can actually reach out to professor or i can actually reach out, reach out to the organization which handles this kind of technical things so likewise we have google developer student club we have iwe clubs and all so you can go there and interact and you can sit out and it's like hey it's not working can you help me out so here students are willing to help you and professors are willing to help you but the only thing or the only responsibility you have to do is put in your efforts instead of sitting at your home and just thinking like hey no one is helping you have to go out and reach out for help it's okay to ask for help so i guess that's all from me so if you have any kind of additional question just please drop it in the chat so i'll answer you for uh, now before you sign off oh, we all have things yeah. we want you to talk about um yeah. pranay i was wondering if you could just very briefly talk about food um and oh, food, access to yeah. food in milwaukee and and share with yeah. the other students about uh your mm. experience with that sure sure i mean i forgot yeah food so actually um milwaukee i i was actually kind of hesitant to, before coming to us i was like okay fine how the food is going to be because in india i was such a rice lover it's like i need to have a rice in afternoon or dinner so my if my mom have some uh, some kind of other food 
she used to cook specifically rice for me so i was very worried like how my food situation is going to be in milwaukee but when i came here i felt nothing different so we have like so many indian stores over here we have bharat mart just uh one mile or something you can go and buy whatever you want like we have rice and we have like uh, if you miss uh it, it's very specific to india but it's like if you miss dosa or idli or those kind of things we have those options and uh, if you don't have a mood to cook indian food and but if you really want to eat we have a maharaja restaurant and different restaurants here like bollywood grill maharaja and those kind of things and it's not like a super Uh, expensive or something it's actually student affordable you can go there and have a pleasant meal you can actually get the flavor of india but uh, as per like uh, food situation i never felt any kind of disturbance because college has a food pantry uh, thing going on if you have like, i mean yeah we have some days like we are short on money and we need some kind of food arrangement but college actually have your backup so you can actually go to the pantry and buy some get some essential food for free like uh, i used to get diced tomatoes or potatoes or those kind of things sometimes but yeah so uh you really don't have to worry about those things if you are like very much uh tightly integrated with your indian platter you can actually replicate that kind of platter here itself so every day at my home i actually cook rice and uh my roommates cook uh, uh curries or those kind of things so i would say you shouldn't be worrying about the food it's we have like plenty of options here and if you want to explore other options we have like uh, uh chinese restaurants and we have like uh, uh classical american restaurants and mexican food tacos and all those things at beginning i was hesitant but uh, after trying it all i really love all those things so yeah and you have uh, i have another question to actually address and they have so many questions related to uh, housing here in uwm so we have actually two options for uwm students either you can actually live in dorm or you can actually uh, stay outside so for me i am living uh, with my friends here so we are sharing two bedroom apartment three members so we share rent accordingly so i pay around 400 dollars including utilities and all so i have my own private room as you can see and uh, apart from that groceries and all so you can actually expect around uh, 500 or 550 ish by the end of the month and including your phone bill or i pay around 600 that's it so that's the most i can get uh, that's the most expenses i have and apart from that if i have any kind of money i just spend on technology i used to collect like old technologies like phones and all those things so you can have those kind of freedom but um, yeah apart from that housing and all i would suggest to join in whatsapp group where jen singer and all all those people are there but be aware to not to pay any kind of money in front so just verify with other seniors of what's going on before taking any kind of financial decisions so like if someone says like you have to pay four months of advance or you have to pay 6 months of advance just don't pay just verify with other sources and talk to them and then only do any kind of financial decisions because once you do those kind of things it's hard to reverse those kind of uh, uh, financial states so i would say just verify on whenever you take those kind of decision and if you have personally any other questions regarding room or anything we have a department dedicated for that center for international education they actually uh, tie you up with kind of some kind of mentors that will help you out throughout the journey so i would say it's it would be a very exciting journey when you join in spring so yeah so if you have any kind of questions just drop in the chat i would happy to help you so jen if you have any other questions do you want me to answer i can answer Ah, uh, thank you, Pranay. I don't have anything in particular right now. Dr. Sure. Boylan, did you have something that you wanted to address? I was wondering if you mentioned mm. that mm. Uh, your trip to Google recently, or okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, thank you, Professor, uh, for mentioning that. Uh, so yeah, as I said, I am a lead for Google Developer Student Club. So it means that uh, it's powered by Google. So this fall, we actually got permission from Google to actually host this chapter. So after starting our uh organization here in uwm 
we actually conducted around seven speaker sessions here. So it varies from speakers coming from Microsoft, Dell, and aeronautic company, and all those uh, different platforms. They came here in virtually, and they actually shared what's going on in the company and uh, what, as a student, what we should be doing and how we should relate to the industry and all. So after conducting and being active in a Google community, so they actually invited me to a North America summit recently. So I just came back from California previous uh, last, uh, this Sunday itself. So that was like a three-day summit and it consists of like a, a whole America and Canada. So total like uh, our GDSC lead, I mean, Google Developer Student Clubs lead around total 110 members came. So across from whole America and Canada, it's uh, so we are like handpicked and they actually uh, allowed to come there so that uh, they actually showcase new technologies, what's going in Google and uh, so what kind of new trends going on. On So when I went there, I actually met people who are actually responsible for developing Android apps uh, such as Google uh, Maps and uh, Google actual home pages and all. And after that, I met a person, Martin, who is actually uh, who is a senior developer in Google for past 15 years. And uh, Wes, who is actually a, a Google developer advocate there. So, and Ronan, who is a main point of contact for Google Cloud, who can actually make big decisions over there. So it was kind of exciting because it's like uh, the main headquarters in California. So mountain view one double six one six double zero amphitheater so we actually see in the promotion mails uh, down google it says google llc one six double zero so i actually went to that address and uh, it was so overwhelming while seeing all those things because uh, back in india i used to dream about all these things i can i need to get a job in google or to go there and take a photo in front of google and say hey hey i am a googler now and to ride the google bicycle but uh, uh because of the GDSC, I got the opportunity to visit early and uh, explore the options of interacting with the actual members of Googlers who are like very relaxed and uh, they have much more to share their experience. And uh, I actually went there and validated what I was doing here in college. Is it actually aligned to industry practices or am I deviated or not? Simple thing they said, like, uh, you did the right things, so that's why you are here. So it's not like... Uh, when you are in Milwaukee, you cannot apply for big tech companies or if you cannot explore Bay Area or something. So UWM is a platform that actually enables you to do all these things. So if you have talent, if you have that kind of uh, zeal in you, you can go anywhere. So uh, the location doesn't really restrict you. So here we have so many opportunities. So you can come here and join GDSC and you can be next person who will be going to uh, Google headquarters because uh, we have a solution challenge coming up this spring semester. So if you're talented and if you really want to submit your, uh, put on all your technical skills together, you can actually join my team and uh, help me contribute to solution challenges. So you can be next member who can be invited to Google. So yeah, that's my experience. Thank you, Professor Bolan, for reminding me. And one last thing, um, can you yes. comment on the thing asking about whether you got a scholarship from the department? And then I'm going to talk about other mm -hmm. possibilities. Um, actually, I did. I did get scholarship from the department for, I, uh, for spring semester, I got a scholarship known as University Chancellor Award. So those awards are actually given to students. So university things, particularly this students, we actually need to get into a college. So they, uh, they actually gave me for the uh, total of $10,000 of reward and our college fees are around $14,000. So it's like a one semester thing. If you continue to be very good in uh, your academics, they might extend you. It's not confirmed, but it's a chance because I got chancellor out for second semester also. So yes, I, I did get scholarship in first semester. And up, as well, I was doing two jobs in first semester, one as a grader for operating systems and another position I was doing as a financial assistant at Dean's office. So you have opportunities to get a scholarship. But the one thing you have to remember is these kind of departmental fundings and those kind of things are only eligible to regular students, not to professional students. So you have to keep that thing in mind before you send out mails to professors. So as I said, you have all these opportunities. No one is going to come and give it to you. You have to actually ask for them. And if you deserve it, you, you it will come to you. So you have to 
reach out instead of sitting in your room and like hey why no one is coming to me and interacting with you and another main thing before i leave please come to the college on time means if the college starts from june january 23rd please make sure you come around january 11th or 12th before one or two weeks so that you have time to adjust and you have uh, time to adjust your room or your food situation and where to get things if necessary and medicines and all so i would say give yourself a two weeks of grace period because that's the mistake i did because when the college was supposed to start at january 23rd and i came like january 21st or something because i was like hey i want to spend some time with my friends back in india but uh, that's the uh, mistake i did i shouldn't have done that because 21st when i came 23rd when the college started from the first day itself assignments start hitting me so it's like i have to do assignments deadlines are coming up and it's piling up and i have to do my home uh, works like uh, getting stuff from walmart and all but i was i don't have necessary time so it kind kind of crumbled uh, crumbled on me and i felt so lonely at that time because um, so many things happening but i couldn't able to handle it so the pro tip i can give you please make sure you come at least one week if you come before two weeks that's really good because uh, Uh, you can apply for on campuses and you can actually interact with seniors and get to know how milwaukee and or if it helps you you can actually get to get used to winter and how it feels but i would highly recommend you to come one week before or two weeks before before and yeah don't come one day or two days before <laughs> yeah. thank you i guess like so, i, well, I useful cover. information yes Yeah. yeah do do come in advance because yes. it does take a while to get set up and you know, if you're trying to juggle classes at the same time it makes it so much harder yeah thank so, you so much, uh, yes thank you so as pranay mentioned he got a chancellor's award um for his first semester um that is uh usually awarded by the department chair to students who are identified by the admissions committee as being particularly strong um then there are ta ships um and ra ships ta ships uh as prize mentioned there's fewer of them available especially for spring semester because the the deadline for being hired for ta ships is uh much earlier and you need to physically be on campus on january 4th or so. i forget the exact date but you have to be here much much earlier so i wouldn't count on trying to get a ta ship your first semester or an RA ship for that matter um if you haven't already uh been working through the system there is an application form online for the TA ships for RA ships you need to apply from a professor who has funding and if a professor has funding they will usually note it on their webpage um for example i don't have any funding for new graduate students so you can send me all the messages you want and i'll just say you're not you're not looking i don't have anything so uh to uh, try to make sure it makes sense um uh so that's for the and those are all as per nice at all only for people who are already in the regular track day structures and algorithm examination schedule for January 17 19th so that will be a course in which you'll be asked to demonstrate that you're able to program in java or c++ to act um work with a data structure performing some sort of algorithm so this will be like something that might have been on a final exam for data structures and algorithms where you actually need to write code it will be done in person on paper and yes indeed please change your name so that the people uh who are want to give you a pen will see that your name uh matches that on your uh, application. Uh professor I'm really sorry to interrupt. Can I share my internship experience to Yes, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh hello again. So I actually forgot to mention my internship experience. So uh for upcoming spring uh summer semester I'm actually offered an internship position uh, in the company called Kohela and I got a role as data engineer here. So it's like a I was I was dreamt to get this role but finally I got this and during this internship journey it's like um, it's really hard and you have to be very much motivated while applying for this company I mean 
I was at the beginning when I was applying for companies, it's like uh, really getting rejection straight away when I apply. So I have to reiterate myself and reiterate my resumes again and again. So if you see in call, we have another member known as Lisa. So she actually helped me a lot for my resumes and all. So I actually went out and asked for help with Susan McCroy, our department coach here, and Christian Jeng, Professor Christian Jeng, she is our data uh, design analysis professor. So I was just reaching out for help and UWM was actually responded to me, back to me, and they actually helped me to shape my resume and to shape my career. So whenever I have an interview, uh, Lisa recommended me what kind of tools UWM provide. We have a website that is big interview tool. So that will actually help you prepare for interviews. So actually prepared there. So it's like, it's an AI tool, which actually gives you feedback for interviews. And also they will ask you questions and you have to answer and it rates you based on how many hums, hours you put in the words while constructing and it rates you like, are you at gold tier or silver or you have to improve or not. So we have all these incredible resources so provided by UWM and it all actually helped me to lead to my internship. So by this number, I yesterday itself, I got the internship letter, offer letter. So it's really an exciting journey and I really thanks UWM for supporting me and especially Lisa for supporting me. So, yeah. Thank you, Professor, for allowing me to talk. Uh, professor, I guess you are on mute. Thank you, Pranay. And I just want to say to everyone that um, Pranay is a fantastic student and we are delighted to have him at UW Milwaukee. And we're so proud of him for this internship opportunity. Uh, he just learned that he got it. And so it's very, very exciting. We're very proud of him. Uh, and you too can come to UWM and have the same wonderful experience that Pranay is having. Um, we do have one question here about uh, pre-decision status admits. I'm assuming that means someone who has applied but has not yet been admitted. Um, what I can tell you is that we do have all of our applications in process at the moment. Uh, UWM is experiencing a very, very high volume of applications at the moment. Um, and so it's taking us just a bit longer than normal to get through them, but we are processing the applications. We're doing the very best that we can. We know that students are anxious and trying to make it in time to get admitted in time to have the opportunity to apply for a visa and get here for spring. Uh, we are aware of that and we're doing the very best that we can. If you have specific questions about your particular application, uh, you are welcome to email us. I would email us at ISSS at uwm.edu. I'll put that into the chat. Um, hopefully all of you are familiar with that by now, uh, but feel free to send us an email and we can check into it to double check that there's nothing wrong. Um, and uh, I think we've come to the end of our time today. Um, Dr. Boyland or Pranay, do either of you have any final comments uh, that you'd like to contribute? My suggestion would be just to come early and yeah, just bring your winter clothing. Don't don't feel don't feel anything like hey, Milwaukee winter is worse or something. I mean. It's, it's easy to handle here. So I would say nothing to worry about the winter, but don't take it as granted. Just roam around outside with having a shirt on. on. <laughs> just, <laughs> just make sure that you have appropriate winter clothing like gloves and proper shoes, um, a waterproof shoes and all. So just prepare yourself. Don't be overconfident. And please come early. I, I cannot stress on that. Please come early. That's it. <laughs> I have nothing more to add either, so. Great. Well, thank you everyone uh, for joining us today. Really appreciate your time. Uh, we look forward to having you at UWM uh, where you're going to come and, and be wonderful, successful computer science students. Um, I've shown you our website that has the contact information. So if you have additional questions, you are welcome uh, to contact us and we can make sure that um, if you have questions for the program or for Pranay, we can make sure that they get forwarded on so that you get the, the appropriate answers. Thank you so much for everyone uh, for joining us today and uh, look forward to seeing you in January. Thank you.
Bye, everyone.